The Pop Star Written by Gray A. Loon Narrated by Eric Mendelia Chapter 1 Taking a deep breath, Dakota Turner put the pink 12-inch balloon to her lips. She closed her eyes and drew a long, steady breath into it. She could feel her panties start to dampen from the anticipation. Her bare nipples hardened as the neck grew against her lips. It was almost ready. When the balloon was a nice pear shape, She tied it off. Then she placed a balloon beneath her and started to rock back and forth on top of it. She was close. So close. But she needed a little extra help. So she started to imagine she was fucking Max DeLarge. And he was the one blowing the balloon beneath her. Within a couple of minutes, the balloon popped. And Dakota came intensely. She collapsed on her king-sized bed, panting. That was amazing, she said to herself. Then suddenly, she clocked the time and disposed of the pink shards in the trash can in her room before her parents would be home. Dakota had told no one of her fetish for balloons and it all started when she was very young, about five years old. She was at a birthday party and kids were popping balloons, as kids do. But this terrified Dakota. She spent the rest of her childhood avoiding them. Then, when Dakota was about 13, she made a decision that she would try to get over her fear. She never could have predicted what happened next. As she was blowing up a balloon and trying to pop it, suddenly, she started getting very aroused. By the time the balloon had popped, She had her first orgasm. In that moment, her relationship with the toy was brought to a whole new level. Dakota had one other passion in life, and that was the singer, Max DeLarge. Since she discovered one of his videos on YouTube about a year ago, she'd been hooked. Hooked on his music and on fantasies of him blowing up balloons, something Dakota had never had a chance to see in any videos he'd appeared in. Maybe that was a good thing, for she'd no idea how she would react if she did see it. She'd probably have a heart attack or something. But at the same time, it was something she needed to see, desperately. She wanted it so much it almost made her cry in frustration. It was something she didn't go a day without thinking about, though no one knew. All this thinking of Max made Dakota miss him. She didn't know why she missed him. After all, she never met him. But at the same time, she felt like she knew him. After tying back her long brown hair, she opened her laptop and navigated to Max's YouTube channel. Nothing new had been uploaded. She then checked the balloon forums. Nothing new there, either. Dakota felt disappointed. Empty. She was only 18, still a virgin, never had a boyfriend, and certainly never had anyone to share her fetish with. She felt like it was the only thing missing in her life. She was also tired of admiring Max from afar, tired of fantasies being just that. Fantasies. But that was all they would ever be. Because not only was Max a famous pop star, he didn't meet fans apart from on exceptional occasions. Dakota didn't know why that was, Just like she didn't know why she was plagued by these balloon fantasies. She'd never thought like this about anyone before. Suddenly, Dakota heard her mother turn her key in the front door. She quickly got dressed and exited the bedroom as if nothing special had just happened. Dakota was unsure whether her parents even knew she was no longer afraid of balloons. They'd be shocked, she thought, if they knew how she felt about them now. The thought made her laugh slightly. Hi, Mom, Dakota said as she greeted her mother. Hi, honey, Janice Turner said to her daughter. 
She looked exhausted, Dakota thought. She had obviously had an extremely busy day. What have you been doing all day? Nothing. Just waiting for you to get home, Dakota lied. One day, she thought, she would tell her parents about her fetish. Today was not that day. Dakota worked as a waitress in a local restaurant. She'd thought before about applying for a job in a party store, but it didn't seem right to work somewhere like that when she had ulterior motives. So she'd have to stick to a boring kind of job in order for her to make money to live on. And a little on the side to buy the balloon she wanted. Sometimes, though, things would get a little more exciting. Like this afternoon. This afternoon, Dakota had a special job. Well, special for her at least. A booking had been made for a birthday party and it was Dakota's job to inflate balloons to decorate the table. Dakota's pulse was racing. She'd never inflated balloons in public before. The helium tank was in the back room away from the customers. Still, the walls were thin enough that they would still be able to hear the gas whooshing out. Dakota grinned wickedly. Today, she was going to have a little fun. The balloons she would be inflating were 11 inches in diameter, a little smaller than what she was used to, and they had the logo of the restaurant on them. Dakota took one of the balloons, a red one, and stretched it lengthways and widthways. She then slipped the balloon onto the nozzle of the helium tank and pushed the nozzle upward. The balloon began to inflate. When it had reached a nice firm pear shape, She tied it off and attached a white ribbon. After tying the balloon to the handle of the tanks, she sighed. Inflating the balloons was thrilling for sure, but there was one thing she was dying to do. Her heart beat faster as she slipped a blue balloon onto the nozzle and pushed it upward. The balloon didn't have much stamina and popped within 30 seconds. Dakota could feel her panties dampen with lust. She took another balloon, a yellow one this time, and repeated the same process. With each bang, she came closer and closer to orgasm. On the fifth balloon, another red one, she came intensely and let out a little moan of pleasure. She wasn't even worried whether anyone could hear her or not. But someone could hear it. Dakota! Her boss Brody scolded as he entered the back room. You do realize you're meant to be inflating the balloons and not popping them? Dakota found it surreal when someone else outside the fetish scene talked to her about balloons. She shrugged. Accidents happen, she lied. Make sure it doesn't happen again, Brody said coldly. Dakota sighed. She knew she wouldn't pop any more balloons at work. Her job depended on it, but she did slip a couple balloons into her pocket to play with when she got home. Chapter 2 When Dakota arrived home, She was relieved to see her parents were out. Dakota's parents never seemed to be home. Not that she was complaining. It meant that she could get down to some balloon fun without being disturbed. Dakota took the balloons out of her pocket and then stripped down to her panties. She thought carefully about the kind of play she was up for tonight. She took one of the balloons, a blue one, and started to blow it up. When it was nice and tight... She stopped and tied it off. Then she got on top of it and started to rock back and forth. The excitement was almost too much for her, and she didn't want to come too soon. So she started to rock on the balloon more gently. She took another balloon, a red one this time, and blew it up. She was almost ready to explode. She started rocking harder on the blue balloon, And with one hand holding the red balloon, she slid her other hand down her panties and gently circled her clit. 
She was so close now. The red balloon was almost at its limit, but the blue one popped first, and Dakota came. She kept blowing the red balloon until it popped. She came again, and then she collapsed on the bed, panting. Dakota had come to the conclusion that she probably masturbated more than the average woman. It was all because of her fetish. Why did she have a fetish when it was so rare for females to have one? Was it that she had a more masculine brain than her female peers? Whatever it was, she was glad for it because it was the only way she experienced sexual pleasure. Not that she'd ever had the chance to experiment with a man before. She wondered whether she would eventually like vanilla sex just as much or better than balloon sex when she had it. But that, she thought, seemed highly unlikely. Unless that vanilla sex is with Max DeLarge. She had never felt this way about anyone else before. He affected her in a way she couldn't describe. Not that she would say no to any balloon fun with him, mind you. It was a one thing she wanted more than anything. But at the same time, she wasn't sure how she would react if it happened in front of her. Why was she thinking like this? Dakota snapped herself out of her daydream. She knew that even meeting Max DeLarge was a far-fetched fantasy. He hardly ever met his fans. But maybe, if Dakota reached out to him on social media, he might give her the time of day and maybe fulfill her fantasy. It was certainly worth a shot. Dakota booted up her laptop and navigated to Max's Twitter page. She thought carefully about the kind of message she would write. Should she just say hi first, or should she be direct and to the point? She decided on the latter. Hi, she typed. My name is Dakota, and I'm a huge fan. I also have quite an obscure sexual fantasy about you. I would like to see you blow up a balloon until it pops. Is that something you could do for me? Before Dakota even had the chance to rethink the situation... Her fingers had hit the send button. Max DeLarge was enjoying a rare and much-needed day off. He was hanging out in his expensive bachelor pad, paid for by his impressive record sales, numerous Grammys and gold discs. He played some computer games, caught up on the latest Netflix show and checked his email and social media. There wasn't much going on on the social front, except from a bizarre message from a girl named Dakota. Hi, it read. My name is Dakota, and I'm a huge fan. I also have quite an obscure sexual fantasy about you. I would like to see you blow up a balloon until it pops. Is that something you could do for me? The message made Max laugh in sheer confusion. This girl has a balloon fetish? Surely this had to be a joke. He decided to delete the message. It was obviously some kind of prank. Chapter 3 It had been five days since Dakota sent the message to Max and she still hadn't heard anything back. She wondered if he thought the whole thing to be a prank. She'd be skeptical too if someone sent her a message with a fetish as odd and obscure as hers. Dakota sighed, resigning to the fact that she'd never be able to fulfill her fantasies. But she wasn't giving up on her passions that easily. One thing she liked to do was listen to Max's songs and imagine he was blowing up balloons in his video. It was silly but it got her soaking wet in seconds, and she could barely control herself when it happened. But today on Max's YouTube channel, there was an even bigger development. Max's label had posted a video about a competition to get VIP concert tickets and a chance to meet Max. It was a massive deal because Max didn't usually meet fans for some reason. Dakota knew this would be her one and only chance to meet Max. She had to enter. What do I have to do? She wondered and scrolled downward. Soon enough, she got down to the finer details of the competition. 
All she had to do was record a video of herself explaining why she loved Max and why she deserved to win. That seemed easy enough, but she needed to make it the best video anyone had ever created. There was no way she wasn't winning this. Dakota opened her college backpack, took out her notepad and started scribbling down a script. Dakota had worked long and hard into the night perfecting her script for the competition. She felt as though it really pinned down the way she felt about Max. But of course, she had left one vital piece of info out. She wasn't going to mention her balloons. Not yet. Dakota opened her laptop and started up her webcam. She shawshooed her hair and sat straight up. Hi, my name's Dakota Turner, she began, and I'm here to tell you I'm the biggest fan of Max DeLarge. Well, let's see. It all started when I saw one of Max's videos come up on my suggestions panel on YouTube. It was the one for his single, Born Crazy. I was curious, and so I clicked on the link. I loved the song. To this date, it's still one of my favorites. It was funky and had a catchy hook. It's not my usual style. I usually prefer hip-hop. But there was something about that song that had me hooked. I started listening to some of Max's other songs. They were all pretty good. There was nothing too cheesy or anything I didn't like. And I started to get a little bit obsessed. Not stalker obsessed. Just really, really into him. And that's the kind of where I'm at now. I think about Max pretty much all day, every day. Being able to see him in concert and meet him as well would be like a dream come true for me. I also have never been to a concert before, and I can't think of a better concert to be first than Max DeLarge. It was done. The video that might change your life forever. Well, it was almost done. After spending a few minutes doing the final edits, Dakota uploaded the clip to the competition website. Dakota had barely slept a wink over the past two weeks. Of course, she got a little sleep. But her nerves had gotten the better of her and sleep was definitely lacking. Luckily, she had her balloons to help keep her nerves down. Exactly two weeks after she uploaded the video, Dakota received a call on her cell phone from an unknown number. She didn't usually answer unknown numbers, but since she was awaiting a very important call, she answered anyway. Hello? Her voice was barely audible. Is that Dakota? A woman's voice answered. Yes, it is, said Dakota. I'm calling from Diamond Records, Max DeLarge's label. Dakota's stomach did a little flip. I'm very pleased to tell you that you've won our competition, the woman on the other line said. Dakota was silent, but she was jumping up and down excitedly. Dakota? I'm here. Thank you so much. Dakota gushed. You're very welcome. We'll send you an email shortly with the details. Enjoy your experience. She hung up. Dakota was amazed. Not only was she going to see Max DeLarge in concert, but she was going to meet him in person. She also had a plan to make her wildest balloon fantasies come true. Dakota applied the last of her makeup and sighed happily. Tonight, all of her dreams were going to come true. Grinning wickedly, Dakota grabbed her purse and then opened her bedside drawer, taking out a fairly large bag of 16-inch latex balloons. Tonight, when she met Max, she was determined to make her fantasy come true. Dakota had barely thought about how he would react, what he would say, or whether he would reject her or not. There was no room for those kind of thoughts. She had to focus on the plan. Dakota put on her high heels, kissed her mom goodbye, and set off for the concert. Chapter 4 Dakota had a thoroughly enjoyable time at the concert. The music was loud, the lights were bright, and the whole thing gave her such a buzz. She decided she would definitely have to do something like this again. 
but now it was time to put her plan into action. Dakota couldn't have been more nervous as she was being led backstage to Max DeLarge's dressing room. She wasn't nervous because she was meeting a famous pop star. Dakota was really quite a confident young woman. But she was nervous about what was to happen while she was there. Dakota knocked gently on the door of the dressing room. Eh, hello? She stammered. Is that the lucky competition winner? Said a familiar voice coming from inside. Dakota's face lit up in a beaming smile as she entered the room. Hi, I'm Dakota, she said, holding out her hand for him to shake. Mac shook her hand and then wrapped her in a big hug. So nice to meet you, Dakota. They stood there in silence for a moment, not knowing what to say to one another. Dakota casually shut the dressing room door behind her. She knew that if the balloons were going to come out, they need a little privacy. This is a part where I don't really know what to do, Max admitted, laughing. I don't meet fans often, so it's okay, Dakota smiled. I actually have something for you. You do? Dakota nodded, hand shaking. She reached into her purse. She pulled out the bag of balloons. She almost didn't want him to see them. She was almost ashamed. But she knew it was now or never. Max looked confused when he saw the balloons. What are those for? Just, just some fun, Dakota said, her voice high with nerves. It was then that Max realized that Dakota was a girl who'd sent him the prank message. And it hadn't been a prank at all. He nodded understandingly, deciding to play along. May I? He asked, holding out his hand. Dakota's heart began to pound as she ripped open the bag. She held it out to him, and he pulled out a yellow balloon. He put it up to his lips and began to blow. Dakota felt like she was going to explode. Her insides felt red hot. This was what she'd been fantasizing about for years. Max stopped blowing for a second. Aren't you going to do one too? Ah, I'm happy watching you, stammered Dakota. Max started back on the balloon. Dakota couldn't hold herself back any longer. She bit her lip and started to unbutton her jeans. She wasn't even aware she was doing it. But Max was. Well, what are you doing? He asked. Shh. Dakota whispered. She leaned in close, put her arms around his neck, and kissed him softly. He didn't stop her. In fact, he kissed her back. What should I do with the balloon? He asked, his lips still next to hers. The balloon was held between his fingers. Finish it off, Dakota moaned, kissing him again. You mean, Max asked, Dakota nodded again, so Max started back on the balloon once more, and Dakota moved behind him, snaking her arms around his torso. She kissed the back of his neck as he continued to blow. Max moaned into the balloon. Dakota continued to move her hands downward toward Max's jeans, and slowly unbutton them. By now the balloon was growing a small neck. Dakota grabbed a hold of Max's jeans and dropped them to the floor. Then she grabbed a hold of his boxer shorts, and gently pished her hand inside. His cock was already starting to get hard. She tenderly massaged his manhood as he continued to blow. Bam! The balloon exploded, setting Dakota into a frenzy. She grabbed Max and pushed him onto the couch in the center of the room. She pulled off his boxers and eased herself onto him. She grabbed the bag of balloons, which had been conveniently thrown onto the couch, and pulled out a red one. She put it to her lips and began to breathe into it. She continued to rock harder and harder on top of Max while the balloon continued to grow. It looked as if it was ready to explode, and Dakota was definitely ready to explode. Almost. She put three more breaths into the balloon, and it burst. Dakota came intensely and collapsed on top of Max. Are you okay? Max asked. Yes, Dakota panted. 
I think that was the single greatest experience of my life. Chapter 5 Max's eyes have been well and truly open to the world of sexual balloon play. Who knew balloons could be so much fun? He was completely hooked on the thrill. He needed another taste. But how? He decided to head to the nearest Walmart and buy himself some balloons. He had to go in some sort of disguise, of course, so he wouldn't get recognized. Imagine what people would think if they saw Max DeLarge just randomly purchasing some balloons. They'd probably think he had a fetish or something. Well, they wouldn't be far off. The selection of balloons in Walmart was small, to say the least. They came in packs of 12, but were only single colors. Max decided he wanted a little variety. They also did packs of 72 balloons, in boy colors and girl colors. Max decided that he liked the boy colors better, and that had nothing to do with his gender. He picked up the pack of balloons, paid for them at the self-checkout, and left swiftly, as so not to be recognized. When Max got home, he ripped open the packet of balloons, took out a blue one, and started to blow it up. The inflation was not nearly as exciting as it had been with Dakota. When it started to become pear-shaped, he stopped and tied it off. He then took off his jeans and boxers and lowered himself onto the balloon. The taut latex felt good against his cock, but he was finding it hard to reach orgasm as he humped the balloon. After five minutes of panting away, he'd still not come and was beginning to lose patience, not to mention his erection. It was then that Max realized that it wasn't just the balloons he was craving. It was Dakota. Max was nervous as he dialed Dakota's number. He got it from the record company. He told them he just wanted to make a quick follow-up call to congratulate her on winning the contest. He didn't say what he really needed it for. Dakota answered on the second ring. Hello? Hi, Dakota? It's Max. Max DeLarge. Dakota's heart skipped a beat when she heard his voice. What should she say? She decided to play it cool. Uh, hi, Max, she said, blushing slightly. Thank God he couldn't see her. How are you? I'm okay, said Dakota. That wasn't strictly true. The phone call had completely caught her off guard. How are you? I'm good, too. Listen, I was wondering if you wanted to meet up again sometime. Dakota's heart started racing even faster. Sure. She stammered. How about we go for coffee tomorrow? We can meet at the restaurant where you work. Okay. Dakota didn't recall telling Max where she worked, but she must have done. See you there, Dakota. He hung up. Dakota's mind was racing. Why didn't Max want to meet her again? Not that she was complaining or anything. Just curious. She knew she wouldn't get much sleep tonight. Dakota took a good couple of hours deliberating about what to wear. She finally chose a white tank top and jeans. She wasn't sure of the impression she wanted to give off. Dakota arrived at the restaurant a half hour early. She didn't know why she was so early. Maybe because she was nervous. It didn't take long for Brody to spot her. Dakota, you're not supposed to be working today. No, I know. I'm meeting a friend here. She couldn't believe she just referred to Max DeLarge as a friend. Well, you have a lovely day off, and I'll see you on Monday. See you then, Brody. Dakota took her seat and waited for Max. It didn't take him long to arrive. He saw her as soon as he arrived at the restaurant. He was wearing sunglasses, and his dreadlocks were tucked up inside a cap, so he wouldn't be recognized. Hi, Dakota. He said as he walked up to her. He wrapped her in a warm hug. Dakota practically melted in his arms. So, Dakota said as they sat down, Why did you want to see me? 
Max looked around as if he were checking to see if anyone else were listening. I tried some balloons the other day. Hearing him say the word almost gave Dakota an instantaneous orgasm. She pulled herself together quickly. Did, did you like them? Well, Max sighed. I thought I did, and I did kind of enjoy the feel of them on my manhood. He stopped then, in disbelief at what he just said. But, but something was missing. And that was, Dakota took a sip of her coffee. Max looked into her eyes. You, Dakota. Dakota swallowed hard. Me? Yes. It seems I'm drawn to you in a way I can't describe. I don't know if it was the balloons or just being with you, but I want to know more about you and your fetish. What do you want to know? Well, let's start at the beginning. How did it all start? Dakota took a deep breath. It started when I was about five years old. I was at a party, and kids were popping balloons, and I got scared. You used to be scared? Yeah, until I was about 13. I was blowing up this balloon, trying to overcome my fear, and I started to get really horny. I had my first orgasm that day, and well, I guess I've never really looked back. Interesting. Max nodded his head to show he was listening. What is it that appeals to you, specifically, about the balloons? For me, it's a popping more than anything, Dakota explained. Funny how things work out, huh? Yeah, I think it stems from my phobia as a child. What else do you like about them? Max asked. I like being intimate with them. I like the way they feel on my skin, said Dakota. And because of this, I prefer intimate ways of popping, like sitting or lying on them, but also really enjoy watching blow to pop for some odd reason. Is that when you blow them up until they pop? You got it. Dakota took another sip of her drink. How long have you been playing like that? Asked Max. Roughly since I was 16 when I learned I wasn't alone. You're not? Nope. We're called Lunars, and there are roughly 250,000 of us worldwide. Max laughed. Lunars? Yep. Although some people don't like that name, we hang out on forums and YouTube, which incidentally was where I first found you. So what would you like to see me do with a balloon? Like I said, I love watching blow to pop. Do you happen to have any on you now? I don't, but I know where to get some for free. Dakota got up and headed toward the back room. I'm just picking something up I left here on Friday, she lied to Brody, and instead picked up a couple of the balloons with the restaurant logo on them. Then she headed back over to Max and handed him the balloons. If we're going to do this, she whispered, then I might suggest going somewhere a little more private, in case anything happens? Sounds like a good plan, said Max. Your house okay? So they both finished their drinks and got up and left. Dakota simply couldn't wait for what was to happen next. Chapter 6 When they got back to Dakota's house, she was relieved to find that her parents were out again. She didn't want to have to come up with some kind of excuse as to why Max DeLarge was there with her, and she wasn't prepared to tell them about the balloons either. Maybe she never would be. Dakota and Max both took a seat on her king-sized bed, and Max placed the uni-inflated balloons from his pocket onto the bed. So what do you want me to do first? He asked. She handed him one of the balloons, a yellow one. Blow this up, but don't pop it. Max did as he was told. He took the yellow balloon and raised it to his lips, and pumped his first breath into it. Dakota could barely believe what she was seeing, 
Even though she'd seen it before, she could feel her panties start to dampen. She took off her jeans and tank top and proceeded to plant soft kisses along Max's neck. Max moaned as he breathed a long, hard breath into the balloon. Dakota snaked her hands around his torso and down his pants. She grabbed and squeezed his manhood gently, causing him to let out a little whimper. When the neck of the balloon started to protrude toward Max's lips, he stopped and tied it off and handed it to Dakota. She took off her bra and panties and got on top of the balloon, rocking herself back and forth on it. She took another balloon, a blue one this time, and started to blow it up. Get inside me, she instructed Max. He did as he was told again. He felt like he was enjoying being dominated by a woman. He stripped naked and entered Dakota, who was continuing blowing up her balloon. The neck started to grow at her lips, and she bounced harder and harder on the yellow balloon beneath her. Finally, the yellow balloon popped. But Dakota wasn't finished yet. She reached over and grabbed a red balloon and handed it to Max. Blow this up until it pops, she said. Max nodded and started to blow it up. After a few more seconds, Dakota's balloon popped, and she came. Don't stop, she said to Max. Make it pop. Max put three more breaths into his balloon, and it burst. And Max came intensely. Dakota liked to think the balloon helped a little on that front. They both collapsed on the bed, panting. That was incredible, said Dakota, kissing him softly. I have to agree, said Max. Dakota decided to go in for the kill. So now we fucked twice. I guess this means we're kind of together? Max paused for a little while before saying, I guess so. Dakota kissed him again, more passionately this time. She couldn't be happier with her new relationship. She closed her eyes and fell asleep on his chest. Chapter 7 Dakota and Max had been in a relationship for about a month, and in that time, they'd had many a steamy balloon session. In fact, they'd never had sex without balloons involved. Dakota kept pinching herself. She was in her dream relationship with her dream guy. She could hardly believe it was happening to her, or how it had happened. Dakota woke in Max's arms as she had done most days this month. He'd offer to take her on tour, an offer she'd greatly accepted. Her parents took a little convincing, but after a while, they agreed. Dakota joked that she and Max must have left pop balloon shards in every hotel they'd stayed in. When Dakota woke, Max was still asleep. He looked so sweet while he was sleeping. She kissed him tenderly, and he awoke. Good morning he said and kissed her again. How did you sleep? Like a baby, she nuzzled his neck. But before he could answer, Max's phone began to buzz. Who's that at this time of the morning? asked Dakota. Max picked up the phone, stared at the screen, and sighed. Babe, who is it? Dakota repeated. Annie Swift, said Max. Who? Max sat up in the bed and sighed again. She's a crazed fan. She's been stalking me ever since I started singing. Dakota looked at him, stunned. What? You didn't think to tell me? Max got out of the bed. I don't want to worry you. He stood there naked, and Dakota licked her lips with lust. If it were not for the serious situation, she would have taken him then and there. I thought we told each other everything. Dakota covered her naked body with a duvet. Dakota, Max looked at her. Dakota shivered. Even after a month, she still had a mini heart attack when he said her name. 
This has nothing to do with you. This is my problem, not yours. But I'm your girlfriend. Dakota still couldn't quite believe Max DeLarge was her boyfriend. She got out of the bed and took his hands. And what kind of girlfriend would I be if I didn't support you? Whatever you're going through. Max hung his head. He knew Dakota was right. He knew he had to be honest with her. Let's talk about it over breakfast. The hotel restaurant was packed out. Something Dakota was now used to. Max was wearing his usual disguise, comprised of a baseball cap and sunglasses. Dakota was also starting to get used to this. So, Dakota said, pouring maple syrup over her pancakes. Tell me about Annie. She's been sending me messages every day for the past three years. I refuse to entertain her at first, but she just kept contacting me. It's gotten so bad that I had to get a restraining order taken out on her. But she still won't get the message? That's the way it seems. Max took a sip of his coffee. Then Dakota had a worrying thought. Does Annie know about me? Max didn't say anything. And at that moment Dakota knew. Oh my God, she does know about me. Why didn't you tell me? I don't want to scare you, Dakota, Max said. Suddenly, a young woman came up to Dakota. Excuse me, are you Dakota Turner? Before Max could say a word, Dakota nodded. The young woman's face broke into a smile. That means you're Max DeLarge! She screamed, pulling off Max's baseball cap, revealing his dreadlocks. She took her phone from her pocket, put it to selfie mode, and quickly snapped a picture with Max. Thank you! She gushed before walking away. Dakota didn't know quite what to say. I'm sorry, Dakota, Max said. But this is your life now. Let's get out of here, said Dakota. And they both got up and left. Chapter 8 When they arrived back at the hotel room, Max could sense that there was something not quite right with Dakota. What's the matter? he asked, snaking his arms around her waist. Dakota sighed. I don't know if I can handle all this fame. Are you feeling a little stressed? He looked into her eyes. Dakota nodded sadly. Need to relieve that stress? She nodded again. Max smiled wickedly. I have the perfect thing. He opened Dakota's suitcase and pulled out a packet of Q-16s. Dakota's eyes lit up when she saw the balloons. I have an idea, she said, getting undressed. Let's have a blow-to-pop race as we make love. Huh? Max was getting undressed, too. We'll both blow up a balloon and whoever pops our balloon first is a winner. And what do I get if I win? Dakota thought for a moment. Me! She laughed eventually. Deal. Max smiled. He started planting kisses along Dakota's neck, and his hands roamed around the rest of her body. Dakota moaned with pleasure. He pushed her onto the bed and gently entered her. Then he reached into the bag of balloons, which was still in Dakota's hand. He pulled out a blue one, and then Dakota followed suit and pulled out a red one. Ready? Dakota said. Three, two, one! They both started blowing up their balloons. They gently moved around in a way that felt good. The balloons were so big by now, they were almost touching. The necks started to grow at their lips. Dakota felt so close to coming, after three more hard breaths, Max's balloon popped. Dakota came intensely and let go of her balloon. It flew around the room before landing on the bed, deflated. I guess I win, Max said after he came and collapsed on top of Dakota. I guess you do, Dakota said euphorically. She kissed him passionately, and they fell asleep in each other's arms. Max and Dakota woke up about three hours later 
to the sound of Max's phone ringing. Max looked at the screen and groaned. It's her again, he said sadly. Answer it, said Dakota. And say what? Dakota shrugged. Tell her if she keeps bothering you, you'll get the authorities involved. Max thought that wasn't a bad idea. He pressed the green icon on his screen. Annie, if you don't... I'm outside your hotel, Annie said sternly. And I want your perverted girlfriend out here right now. Annie, please, now, or there will be consequences. She hung up. What did she say? Asked Dakota. She says she's outside the hotel. Dakota's eyes went wide. Our hotel? And she wants to see you, like, now. How does she even know we're here? I don't know. But she also said something about you being perverted. Dakota's blood ran cold. Annie knew about her balloon fetish? But how? Will you come with me? She asked Max. You really think I'm going to let you go out there on your own? So they got dressed and headed out toward the hotel parking lot. When they got to the parking lot, Max recognized Annie immediately. She sent him many pictures of herself, not all with clothes on. Max shuddered at the thought. Annie, Max said, what are you doing here? I'm here for her, Annie said. She proceeded to walk up to Dakota and slapped her hard. Max squared up to Annie and grabbed her shoulders, but Dakota stopped him. Baby, don't, Dakota screamed. You call him baby one more time and you die, Annie shouted, pointing at Dakota. You're a psycho, Dakota said, shaking her head. Says the girl fucks balloons. How the hell do you know about that? Asked Max. Why are you with her? Why her and not me? Annie's voice was raised even louder. You didn't answer my question, Max said. Annie laughed. I saw you through the window. Now, Dakota, we either leave Max, or the whole world knows that Max DeLarge is fucking a pervert. How do you know I'm the balloon fetishist, and not Max? Oh, please. Max would never be into something so sick. Dakota almost felt like she wanted to punch Annie. She almost did, but Max stopped her. Annie laughed again. Can't handle the truth, can you, Dakota? Max... You have 24 hours to come to your senses. She turned away and left. Max and Dakota just looked at each other for what felt like forever. What were they going to do now? Chapter 9 The following evening, Max had a big concert, and Dakota, as usual, had a VIP seat in the front row. She could definitely get used to this part of being the girlfriend of a pop star, she thought to herself. Inside the arena, the atmosphere was electric, and it soon occurred to Dakota that she was now just as famous as Max was. People were asking for her autograph. This was a part of the experience she would never get used to. When the gig was over, the two of them retreated back to Max's dressing room. It made Dakota think of the first time they met, and it gave her an idea. Dakota always kept a bag of Q16s in her purse, in case the opportunity for some fun ever presented itself. She took out the bag, opened it, and handed it to Max. He reached in and grabbed an orange balloon, he started to blow it up. Dakota, who could already feel herself getting wet, took off her clothing. She snaked her arms around Max's waist and kissed his neck hard. He moaned into the orange balloon. Dakota started unbuttoning his pants from behind. She pulled them down to his ankles, kissing him as she did. By now, the balloon was a nice, tight pear shape, and the neck protruded toward Max's lips. Dakota pushed him onto the couch and gently lowered herself onto him. 
Max took the balloon from his lips and began rubbing it gently over Dakota's breast. She moaned with pleasure. Bang! Suddenly the balloon burst, snapping at Dakota's skin. The stinging sensation paired with a loud bang made her come, more intensely than she ever had before. Max came too, and they collapsed in a heap on the couch. Max kissed her tenderly and said, I love you, and they fell asleep on the couch in each other's arms. Dakota and Max spent the next couple of days, Max well earned days off, doing normal couple things like shopping, walks on the beach, etc. Max had completely forgotten about Annie, but Dakota was well aware her threat was still hanging in the air. What are you going to do about her? She asked as they walked hand to hand along a sandy beach. The waves crashed on the shore as Max put his other arm around Dakota. About who? Max asked. Annie. Oh, her? Nothing. My people will take care of her. Are you sure? Max said nothing. Max, she's going to reveal my secret. Dakota said, her eyes going wide. What am I supposed to do? Max looked at Dakota. I don't know. Their walk was suddenly brought to a halt by an intruding paparazzi. He tried to take photos of the couple, but they ran away quickly. Luckily, Max kept his baseball cap and sunglasses in Dakota's purse in case of emergencies like this. It started to rain, and they rushed toward a small cafe where they took shelter. Max ordered two coffees and they sat down. We really need a plan, Dakota said. Well, if Annie does anything, just deny it. Dakota didn't really want to deny that she had a balloon fetish. After all, it was a huge part of who she was. She felt like she was cheating herself if she denied it. But on the other hand, what would people think if they knew? After thinking for a moment, Dakota quickly changed the subject slightly. Do those pops follow you everywhere you go? Pretty much. You should be used to it by now. It's just that I'm not sure I can handle it. You know what you signed up for, said Max. Why are you being so insensitive? Dakota's voice was raised slightly. I'm not. This whole anything is getting to me. Dakota rubbed her coat and stood up. I don't think I can do this anymore. Dakota, Max began to say, but it was too late. Dakota turned around and left. Max sat there, feeling like he was about to cry. He'd had the best month of his life with Dakota, and now it was all over. Chapter 10 Dakota was beginning to regret breaking up with Max. Yes, the paparazzi was something she would never quite get used to, as was a threat of Annie, but she'd had the time of her life over the past month. She don't want to go back to her sad existence of fantasizing from afar, never being able to make her fantasies come true, but now she had so many real-life experiences to draw from. She felt very conflicted. Suddenly, there was a knock on Dakota's bedroom door. It was her mother, Janice. She was holding a celebrity magazine, which was odd, because Janice wasn't the type to read celebrity magazines. Her face looked as if she'd seen a ghost. Dakota, she said. Dakota sat up on her bed. Is this true? Is what true? Dakota asked, confused. But she could pretty much guess what was coming, and it made her blood run cold. Is it true that Max broke up with you because you have... I can't even say it. Dakota read the headline on the magazine. Max and Dakota in fetish split shock, it read. Dakota blushed hard. Her secret was out. What was she going to say now? Dakota... I thought I brought you up better than that, said Janice. Okay, 
Now her mother was getting offensive. You've brought shame onto our family. She continued, Mom, it's just a little fetish. It doesn't mean anything. That was a lie. Dakota's fetish meant a great deal to her. Out! Her mom shouted, pointing toward the front door downstairs. She proceeded to throw some of Dakota's clothes into a hold hall and threw the hold hall down the stairs. You have ten minutes to leave this house. Dakota started to cry, but she knew she didn't have a choice. She picked up the hold hall and left the house. It was pouring with rain, and she'd nowhere else to go. She settled under a bus shelter and then cried some more. Luckily, the rain hid her tears from the rest of the public. Dakota felt completely alone. She knew there was only one person she could talk to in this situation, but she wasn't sure he wanted to hear from her. Dakota's hand shook with nerves as she dialed Max's number. She had never felt more scared in her entire life, partly because she was now homeless, and partly because of Max. She didn't have to wait long for Max to answer. He shouted cheerful when he picked up the phone. Dakota! Did you see the magazine? Dakota sobbed. What's the matter? I've been thrown out. Why? Because that bitch Annie sold a story about me having a balloon fetish. That's why. She said we broke up because of it. Max sighed sadly. She's gone too far this time. Dakota was silent for a moment. Is that all, Dakota? No, I miss you. Pops and all? Pops and all. Please take me back. How I've longed for you to say that. Dakota's face broke into a smile, despite her situation. You also need somewhere to live, said Max. Now, I can't offer you anywhere permanent, because you know, pop star... But wherever I am, you're more than welcome to stay. Dakota sighed with relief and happiness. You're amazing. I love you. I love you too. Have done since the day I met you. Really? Yes, Dakota. It's always been you. Only you. Why me? Max sighed again. Honestly, Dakota, I don't know. Something about you just draws me to you. Was it the balloons? Maybe. They certainly helped. Well, they're definitely not going anywhere. Speaking of things that are not going anywhere, Max said, What are we going to do about this Annie situation? Why don't you come pick me up and we can discuss it then? Max laughed a little. You must be soaking wet. And not in a good way. I'll be right there. He hung up. Chapter 11 The first thing they did when Max picked up Dakota was head to the party store. Max knew that Dakota wouldn't have any balloons on her anymore. He also knew how much they meant to her. So he promised to buy her as many balloons as she wanted. To make her feel better. And as a thank you for taking him back. Dakota didn't hold back. She chose three packs of assorted Q16s. Jewel tones. Her favorite. Then they headed back to Max's hotel to break in her new purchases. Max took a red Q-16 from the bag and started to blow it up. Even after all this time, seeing Max blow up a balloon still affected Dakota tremendously. She unbuttoned her pants and started to gently circle her clit. She too took a balloon, a yellow one, and blew it up until it was a nice, firm pear shape. She stopped then and tied it off. She then took off her pants and panties and straddled the balloon. Max, who had also been undressing with his free hand, eased himself inside her, still inflating his balloon. Straddling a balloon while watching Max blow one up was an incredible turn-on for Dakota. She came before Max's balloon popped, but not by much. 
She timed her bounces on her yellow balloon with the pulses of her orgasm. As she was finishing up, her balloon popped, and Max also came. She liked to think the balloon had something to do with that. Again, they collapsed in each other's arms and fell into a deep, blissful sleep. Dakota could not have been more nervous. She and Max had agreed to meet Annie at a local cafe. To talk about what? She still wasn't sure, but she hoped she would at least get some answers. Max and Dakota arrived first. Max was wearing his baseball cap and sunglasses. Annie would surely recognize him anyway. Annie arrived about a half hour late. She was wearing a rather revealing dress. Dakota wanted to slap her, but Max stopped her. This was not the time for violence. Annie, Max began as they sat down. You know why we're here. We're here because you still won't come to your senses. Annie, we're here because of what you did a few days ago. Annie, Dakota said. Why do I get the feeling you're hurting? Suddenly, Annie started to cry. Because I am. Look, I can explain why I've done what I've done if you'll just hear me out. We've got all day. Max took a sip of his coffee. Annie sighed, still sobbing. I don't have a lot of love in my life. In fact, Max and his music are the only love I've ever known. So when I saw you with Dakota, I was heartbroken. I felt I had to do something. I felt you were mine. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. I'm sorry. It was then that Max and Dakota realized they were dealing with a very sorry case. So you've got no family? Asked Dakota. My mom doesn't love me and my dad abused me. Suddenly, Dakota felt sorry for Annie. After all, she knew what it was like to be abandoned. If we could get you some help, said Max. Would you leave us alone? You'd do that for me? Of course, said Max, if you promise to leave us alone. I promise. And with that, they all got up. Max gave Annie a big hug, and they all parted ways for the last time. Chapter 12 Dakota knew exactly what she wanted to do to celebrate getting Annie off their backs. She grabbed the bag of Q16s from the nightstand in the hotel room and started to blow one up. When it was a nice pear shape, she tied it off. Max got undressed and Dakota followed suit. Max put the balloon under his butt and Dakota mounted him. Then they each grabbed another Q16 and started to blow them up. It was a race to see who could pop their balloon first. They began humping each other and the balloon beneath them vigorously. Before long, Dakota's balloon popped. Max's balloon was not far behind. Dakota dug her nails into the balloon beneath them and it exploded. They both came simultaneously and more forcefully than ever before. It was the best sex they ever had. Dakota woke in the middle of the night and turned to look at Max. She nudged him gently, and he awoke. Baby, she whispered, what is it? Thank you. For what? For everything these past few months. She kissed him tenderly. Max smiled and was silent for a moment. Dakota was about to go back to sleep when Max said, Marry me. What? I want you to marry me. Dakota was silent again for a few moments. Then she said, yes. About the author, Gray A. Loon, a pen name obviously, has had a balloon fetish for their whole life. Like a lot of lunars, Gray started out life being afraid of balloons. As they got older, that fear slowly turned to obsession. Now Gray is a writer and has also written the non-fiction book The Lunar Phenomenon and the short story collection Balloon Girls, Sexy Stories of Hot Female Lunars. 
Connect with the author. GrayALoon.com Twitter at Loon underscore Gray Enjoyed this book? If you like this book, please leave a positive review on Amazon. Thanks, Gray. This has been The Pop Star, written by Gray A. Loon, narrated by Eric Mandalia. Copyright 2018 by Gray A. Loon. Production copyright by Gray A. Loon.